Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 256 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Welcome back and welcome to the brand new studio. I'm sure it doesn't look any different from any of the other uh, episodes we filmed because it's the same backdrop, but we're in a brand new studio. Look at the lighting. The lighting's a little bit different. You know, if you're listening to this, it'll sound exactly the same. If you're watching this, it'll be lit correctly. Now, you might be wondering, wow, how much money did you spend on these new lights? Uh, zero. Someone just taught me how to use them properly. Apparently, we used them wrong for two years. Uh, I'll blame Keelan for that one, and uh, feel free to do so in the comment section as well. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. This is really good. We're a minute in. We, we've already blamed Keelan for something that wasn't really his fault, so we've returned. The show is back. Uh, sorry that it uh, disappeared so long. Couldn't be fucked doing it. I could make up a big lie uh, about, um, oh, there was this many... Actually, there were, there were a lot of reasons. I have crippling sleep apnea and my face is fucking broken i'm getting my whole face reconstructed in uh may right so until then i just can't breathe you know how i have to live my life now you know a big reason why i didn't do the podcast is because the, the i used to wear a vibrator on my chest that every time i would sleep on my back i would just stop breathing uh and instead of you would think right that the human body would go oh i'm like fucking dying maybe i should wake up but instead, if you stop breathing while you're asleep, your brain goes, I reckon I can sleep my way through this one. <laughs> Which doesn't make any fucking sense. It's like, oh no, there's lack of oxygen. Let's, let's not even roll over. Let's not wake up the body. Let's just, tr let's just try inhaling again. And then, and then you just die. Or, like me, you just stop breathing for 30 seconds every two minutes. And then you... You know, I haven't dreamed for three years. That's true. I haven't had a dream for three years. Every now and then, my, my girlfriend tells me about her dreams. I'm like, that sounds amazing. That sounds like a movie. I haven't, I haven't had a fucking dream in three years, dude. Because I don't reach deep REM sleep. And that's why, if you ever scroll through my Instagram, I look like I'm melting. My face is fucked. You ever see a, a, a story from me and you go, gee, that guy looks like a ghoul from Fallout. Yeah, he hasn't slept. He hasn't had a dream for three years. Uh, but the main reason it got so bad was because I, I, was use, I was wearing a vibrator on my chest. And every time it would detect me on my back, it would start to vibrate. And then I would turn over and wake me up a little bit. I'd turn over. And that worked for a little bit. But then... According to my girl, in my sleep, I worked out that I could just flip it over, flip the actual vibrating thing over with my hand, and then it would think that I'm on my back and I wouldn't have to turn over, and then I could very comfortably go back to suffocating and starving my brain of oxygen. People keep making fun of me because I get basic math wrong. Dude, I don't, I don't breathe for at least eight hours of the day. I just go, I go in, I go into a, like a fucking space vacuum and I don't get any oxygen for eight hours a day. And, and I still do this show. And that's why I say so many dumb things. Cause I haven't dreamt for three years cause I haven't slept. Right. So I don't know. I don't understand like why my brain can like wake up in the middle of the night to stop the annoying vibrations on my chest, but can't wake up to roll over because I'm suffocating. Like for some reason, my brain's priorities are so out of whack that it's like, oh, this vibrating thing's annoying. Uh, the suffocating though, that's fine. We can deal with that. So what I've got now is that vibrating thing changed my life for the better. It was so good. And then it just stopped working because I worked out how to flip it over while I was asleep. And I don't remember doing this, but apparently I do it every night. So I just stopped sleeping again. Uh, and then, so that thing is called a buzz pod. And it's, it's, it's like one of those products that's like, could definitely make some guy a billionaire if he just found some, some dude who owns an island like Jeffrey Epstein to invest in it and, and build out the infrastructure like a little bit bigger. But at the moment, the only way to get one of these things is to email the guy and he like literally solders and it all the wires and all the technology and like programs it manually by himself in his garage. And then he, he mails it to you in Australia Post back, which is like if you're sending stuff via Australia Post, you might as well just stomp on it before you put it in the post box. You might as well, because it's going gonna, it's gonna to get like that anyway. In fact, I would argue that if you put a big boot print on your Australia Post parcel before you put it in the post box, the poster would say, oh, I've already done that one, and move on to the next package. And yes, we use Australia Post for Luke and Lewis merch. 
but you can't really stomp on a t-shirt. Well, you can. So it, look, enjoy. Luke and Lewis dot shop. Um, <laughs> now, uh, by the waste of time shirts, they're selling terribly. Um, so this thing, I it broke, right? Not only was I flipping it over, but then it kind of broke. So I emailed the guy. I'm like, hey, man, I'm having this problem. And he goes, yeah, no worries. I'm pretty sure what I can fix that for you. All you need to do is post it back to me. And then I'm going to charge you 80 bucks an hour to fix it and then post it back and then charge you a repair fee. And I went, cool, man, your product's revolutionary and it's changed my life, but I would rather die in my sleep. Uh, and I ignored him for like a month just on principle. And you know who paid the price for that? Me and everyone who enjoys my podcast. So what I've done is I've gone out and I don't know if you, if you know about this guys, but there's this revolutionary thing on the internet called Google where you can just like Google things like to, to help with problems and it'll give you an answer. Uh, and now, uh, I, I have, uh, this thing from like a professional sleep apnea business thing called the night shift. And I put it, I put, I don't wear it on my chest. I wear it around my neck. And, and this is what I wear to bed. I wear my vibrating dog collar to bed. Now, isn't that, isn't that a little bit sexy? Every night before I get into bed, this is what my girlfriend says. Oh, hang on, I've got to put on my vibrating dog collar. And, uh, and, and if, if I lie on my back, it's, it's going to buzz. Now, that's hot. That, now, that's hot. And that's why I've been able to do the show is thanks to this contraption. We walked into this sleep apnea place. or Jazz went there to pick it up for me because I was like... Uh, she found she. I think uh, she found me asleep at 2 p.m. after I had woken up at 11 a.m. <laughs> and she was like, "Okay, this is a fucking problem." I think one day I did a gig. I did like a normal day's work, nothing hard. Did a normal day's work, and then I performed that night, and I fell asleep on the train and lost my wallet. <laughs> like my brain, my life just started to fall apart because uh, I just started falling asleep during the day. I think I went over to Luke's house to do some stuff. I was like, yeah, sweet, let's do that. He went upstairs to like set everything up, turn the computer on. He comes down 30 seconds later, I'm asleep on his couch. And he looks at me like, oh, what a lazy cunt. I have a disease. <laughs> I have a chronic illness. He's going, what's this guy sleeping? I haven't dreamt for three years. All right. You know that classic one where you, you dream you're falling out of bed you, or you dream you've fallen off a cliff and you fall for 10 minutes and then, and then you hit the floor and you've actually fallen out of bed in real life? I don't get that. I just fall out of bed. I just get the, the second bit. I don't get the first scary dream. I just get the impact of the floor and I go, oh, I'm on the floor. I don't dream, right? So Jazz goes to pick up this sleep apnea vibrator thing for my neck and she walks in and... Uh, she goes, she tells me the guy, the guy's like, oh, how, like, who is, who are you buying this for? Cause he looks at her, it doesn't look like it's for you. Uh, and she goes, oh, this is for my, for my partner, my boyfriend. And, uh, and he's like, okay, cool. And she tells me that she's like the only person in that room under 300 kilos. Like this is a, this is like an obese old man's disease. I should not have this, right? The guy running the business goes, Okay, and how old is your boyfriend? Probably expecting that she's some gold digger and he's like some 300 kilo Bitcoin millionaire who owns a yacht. And she goes, oh, he's 28. And he went, oh, <laughs> that shouldn't happen. So that's great. And now this is what I wear to bed. Uh, and, uh, and, it's, and honestly, it's changed my fucking life. Within a week. I was like, oh my God, I can remember things. Not birthdays or names or faces. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes I will remember where I've left my keys. <laughs> and that's changed my fucking life because I always lose my keys. I haven't had a dream yet, but I'm really waiting for it. One day I will have a dream and I'll tell you guys about it. Um, so that's happening. And then my surgery is going to happen in May. So, oh, the comedy festival's on sale now. Lewspears.com, straight out of Frankston. Brand new show. It's going to be sick. It's going to be probably the only show that I do this year because of my surgeries. Everyone's asking me, oh, when are you coming to Sydney, Brisbane, all of that? I'm, I may not at all this year because of my surgery. So this Melbourne Comedy Festival might be the only shows that I do this year because in May I get my face chopped, my head chopped in half, and then they put a spacer in the roof of my mouth, and then I get braces. And then six months after that, they cut my jaw in half and the tip of my chin off and reattach it. And then 
I have recovery again. So there's probably going to be two periods of this year where I can't speak for a month. So I, I'm not going to promise this, that this podcast will come out every Sunday, but I will say this, you better appreciate it when it arrives. So yeah, look, that's a little bit update, a little bit of an update of where I'm at. I hope you guys are doing well over the break. I hope you didn't celebrate Australia Day because that's not allowed anymore. You're not allowed to celebrate Australia Day at all. And you know who's struggling with this the most? You know who struggles with Australia Day the most? It's not people who love Australia Day. It's not uh, Indigenous people who are sad on Australia Day. They have it pretty tough. But you know who really has it tough? Coles and Woolies. Because they don't know what the fuck to put on their ads. Come Australia Day, they don't know what to do. Because you can't, as a business anymore, go... Hey, come get supplies for Australia Day because then they get bombarded by half the country going, you shouldn't be having fun on Australia Day. You shouldn't. Like I went to uh, Woolworths the day before Australia Day, right, to buy dishwashing liquid, not sausages. (laughs) Because you're not allowed to have fun on Australia Day, right? And I saw someone, their cart was chock full of like barbecue supplies. There were sausages, there were chips, there was soft drink, there was alcohol. There was, I mean, they they weren't even, they weren't ashamed at all. They were right out there with it. They weren't afraid at all. They had fucking barbecue cleaner in the trolley. Get that shit on online, at least, for, you, for your own sake. The amount of dirty looks they got for a trolley full of fun, Items the day before Australia Day was shocking. I wasn't looking at them. I was looking at everyone else looking at them. Some people were looking at them going, gee, that's brave. I I wish that I could openly say that I'm excited for my day off tomorrow. And then the other half of the supermarket was like, you disgusting pigs, you're going to have fun tomorrow. Not me. I'm going to sit in my armchair and scroll and read and like posts (laughs) and amplify voices. That's going to be my invasion day, right? Uh, and then I'm like, oh, that's kind of funny that, that everyone's judging this person for, for enjoying their day off. And then I look around at the advertisements and there isn't a single Australian flag anywhere. Because even like two years ago, businesses would go Australia Day, celebrate Australia Day. There'd be flags everywhere to be quite patriotic. And they go, buy our shit for your, for that, to have fun tomorrow. Now some, it's changed, Right. Because this is like the first day, the first Australia Day in Australia that you actually could do something, but you're not allowed to, right? So Coles or Woolies that I was in, what they did, they were like, they had a big ad that said, need barbecue supplies? <laughs> so, that, so they were like, hey, if you're having a barbecue, you know, next week, not tomorrow, you can get some supplies from us today. Are you guys, is is anyone else having a barbecue for no particular reason at all? Are you just interested in uh, smoking meats in the backyard while not listening to 100 songs? (laughs) You know? If, if, If by chance, this is a big fucking guess, but if anyone was to have a barbecue on a weekday, right, with a little inflatable pool and a bucket hat and a few beers and a glass table... We've got you covered. Whether or not your supplies are going to be used to celebrate Australia Day, that's none of our business. We don't support Australia Day, but we will make money out of it without saying the name. Woolworths. It is is an interesting thing. You're not allowed to have fun on Australia Day. The whole country is torn up about it. I, I know a few people that had secret Australia Day parties, right? They had them. And you have them with all your friends who like Australia Day, but you don't tell half your friends. And you, and you can't post it on your Instagram story either because you're not allowed to celebrate it because it's an invasion, right? And I didn't celebrate it. So, don't, so I'm going to tell a few jokes, but don't come at me. I didn't celebrate it. But also I don't really celebrate anything. I had a birthday in January. You know what I did? I watched TV. <laughs> so I don't celebrate much. Right, But I didn't celebrate Australia Day. And in fact, I did my part to stop the celebration of Australia Day because I actually made an electrician come over to my house on Australia Day. So not only did I not celebrate Australia Day, I also ruined it for some other cunt. 
So, you know, there's all these social justice warriors not celebrating Australia Day. You know what? Next year, book a tradie to come over on Australia Day and ruin it for him too. The whole change the change the date debate is uh, is interesting. I think we should change it. I think that we should. Cha- I think we need an Australia Day. I think the date that we've chosen is fucking stupid. It doesn't celebrate Australia. It's. Uh, I should take my vibrator off. I feel like this is going to look really weird if this gets turned into a clip. And I go, man, this guy's spitting facts. What the fuck is he wearing around his neck? Is that vibrating? I think we should we should change the date because it's not Australian. It's uh. It's. It's celebrating another uh, another colony for the for the British Empire. Like it's not there's nothing Australian about it. It's like uh, some cunt rocked up with a letter and was like mine dibs, <laughs> and then a few other people were like, well, actually, I'm here. Bang! That's the day, and everyone goes, oh, it's it's Australia. It's not inv-. it. Look, it. I had this conversation with my dad. Here's what you're up against, okay? You're up the people who want to change the date. This is who you're up against, okay? I'm going to give you some perspective. I come from a very working class family. My dad's a tradie, my brother's a tradie. This is my brother's perspective on it, and it's interesting and I think it's an important point of view. Fuck off. I have a really hard job. Don't tell me to not enjoy it when I have a day off. That's what my brother thinks. He goes, "I don't give a fuck about Australia Day." I just hate the fact that people are telling me that I can't enjoy my day off. All these office workers and people who live in the inner city of Melbourne who don't have hard jobs are trying to tell me that I'm not allowed to enjoy my day when I get a rare day off after working in 30 degree heat, destroying my body and breaking my spine. If I get a public holiday and a day off, I'm going to enjoy it. That's a fair point. And I think... That's also why we should move it because then he still gets his day off, right? Now, that's my brother. That's the new tradie, the progressive tradie. Fuck off, I don't care. I'm still going to do it. Here's dad. (laughs) I talked to dad on Australia Day and I joked around. I'm like, oh, you're not celebrating Invasion Day, are you? And my dad goes, oh, it's... You know when you talk to your dad and and he says some shit and you're like, oh, I didn't know you thought that. (laughs) <laughs> you know every now and then it just comes out and you're like oh okay I I, I, I thought too much of you <laughs> my dad never never said anything racist in his life and is a genuinely lovely dude and I, he doesn't have prejudice in his body but because of the way that he was raised as a kid sometimes the shit comes out right and even sometimes he's like I'll go why do you think that and he'll go oh fuck I don't even I, I think a nun told me that my dad grew up, his high school was a private school and all of his teachers were nuns. And one day he was fucking around in, in the class and he stuck his head out the window and yelled at one of his friends. And then one of the nuns came up behind him and grabbed him by his frizzy hair and then banged his head, head all around the rim of the window. And he, and he broke his glasses and had a bloody nose and cut his face. So that, that's just the people that raised my dad, okay? So I'm going to preface this with that. I go, oh, you're not celebrating Invasion Day, are you, Dad? And he goes, oh, it's not Invasion Day. It's uh, it's Arrival Day. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, well, I think they did a little bit more than Arrive. They weren't like, hello, how you going? You guys enjoying your natural resources and your culture and your way of life? All right, sweet. I'll see you in 200 years. I'll build some roads or something. It's not really what happened. And he goes, oh, well, it's more of a, it's more like a, a rival day, you know? They, I said, yeah, but like they, they, it's, it is like the textbook definition of an invasion. A foreign nation came to a different nation with soldiers and took it from them by force. That's an invasion. It happened many, many years ago, but it's, that's what it is. Uh, and then my dad goes, yeah, well, it's more of like an, an arrival day, not really an invasion. They just kind of showed up with a letter from the Queen. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. And what do they do with the letter? Hey, guys, what's up? I've just got a letter from the Queen. And uh, if you read that, it says that we own this. And then whoever the first person to see white people was like, 
What the fuck are these strange squiggly lines on a piece of paper? That art sucks, dude. Come check out my cave. We use color. We draw things. This is fucking stupid. It's not... It wasn't like a... It wasn't like a friendly conversation. But anyway... We're talk, I'm talking to my dad and he goes, oh, well, he like, every time I talk, you know, when you, every time I talk to my dad like this, he eventually just comes around and is like, oh, well, you know what? Yeah, I guess you're probably right. Uh, but he goes, for this one, he always, he always ends up going back to the original position, which is, oh, I don't know if it's that bad. And, and I go, well, what do you think that? And he goes, well, I just think that the education we got was very different to the education you got. And I'm like, yeah. Like, your one was racist. <laughs> and he goes, no, we learned about indigenous culture. I'm like, did you? I was genuinely surprised. I didn't say you were taught racist things. I said that you weren't taught much. And he goes, oh, yeah, look, we were taught like, uh, we, had, we had like a whole two weeks of indigenous education. And I was like, oh, that's crazy. That's actually more education than I got. And I got, I got fuck all in school. They were like, oh, Aboriginal people were here. They use boomerangs and eat witchetty grubs. That's all we were told. We're like, oh, okay, cool. They have cool sticks and eat bugs. I, that seems like a strange thing. It's a weird thing to tell me about those people. Like, that's the only thing you tell me about their cultures? Oh, they eat bugs and they could throw sticks. It's like, okay, cool, right. I feel like there's more to that story, but whatever. And my dad goes, we had two weeks of Indigenous education in grade four. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. What did you learn? And he goes, oh, well, we learned about their culture and uh, we learned about corroborees and we learned a lot of traditional dances and we learned traditional foods that they ate. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is like actually really interesting. I wish that I was taught this. And he goes, and we were taught a little bit about the history and we were taught about all, all of the different tribes that owned different parts and we were taught that there was no one Aboriginal language. There were many, many languages. And this is all stuff that I learned after school. So I'm like, fuck, my dad actually was taught heaps about Aboriginal Indigenous culture. And he goes, and then he goes, yeah. And then on, on the final day, uh, we had like, we took everything that we learned and the school got us to do like an official celebration of Indigenous culture day. Like, uh, you know, how in America they might have Black History Month. At his school, they had celebrate Indigenous culture day. And... He goes, what all the kids did is we all dressed up as Aborigines, his words. <laughs> and, you know, you would go to mum and go, oh, do you have any brown stockings? And dad would put out boot polish. And he goes on to tell me that at his private school run by nuns, 400 year fours were running around in blackface doing indigenous dances at school all day. Some kids walking around with fucking afros, duct tape to their heads. And he goes, and that's what we learned about Aboriginal culture. So that's what you're up against when you're like, oh, we should change the date. You're up against thousands of dads who dressed up in blackface and did what they thought were traditional dances at school while nuns clapped and were like, yeah, it's very good. Not a, and he goes, we, I didn't meet an Aboriginal person until I was 25. <laughs> so, look, I think, I don't know. That's what you're up against, is fuck off. I want to have fun on my day off. And 40 years ago, I did blackface at school because everyone was doing it. Or, or not even because everyone was doing it, because I did it as a child because I was instructed to by nuns. <laughs> so, yeah, you learn something new about your dad every day. You ever talk to your dad and go, oh, fuck, that's crazy. Once you, I, I, I'm telling you, man, once you hit 25, dad's going to tell you some shit, you know? 18 years old, he's not going to tell you fucking anything that he did because you're going to go, I have to top that. Once you hit 25 and you go through your crazy phase and you got a job and your soul's crushed and you're sitting in a little cubicle, dad's going to tell you, hey, I did LSD and I was in an orgy once. Don't tell your mother. My dad hasn't told me that. Talk to your dad. Maybe he will.
We interrupt this episode to let you know that this podcast is sponsored by Manscaped.com, the best ball bag trimmer in the game. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping at Manscaped.com to get the best personal trim, groomer, trimmer, whatever you want to call it in the game. Something I use all the time. I've said it many times before, and I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, oh, every time he talks about Manscaped, I have to try and, and not picture his balls. I'll tell you this. I want you to picture my balls, but not only that, I want you to picture my member and how beautifully trimmed and groom they are and that's all thanks to, to genetics but also to manscaped all right it's looking nice fresh clean and great down there all thanks to the lawnmower 4.0 which you can get with 20 percent off and free shipping at manscaped.com if you use code spears it's a great product they've been a huge supporter of this podcast and everything else that i do it's really important to support the brands that support what i do that's how i keep a roof over my head and a backdrop behind me in the podcast so uh use code spears for manscaped.com uh, best trimmer in the game i use it all the time what can I say? <laughs> Scott Morrison's in trouble. Gladys Berejiklian, the former Premier of New South Wales, has allegedly, my friendly Geordie's new favourite word, allegedly, it appears, it seems to be, in my opinion, <laughs> Gladys Berejiklian has allegedly trashed Scott Morrison in a bunch of texts can you pull up what she said about him? Uh, she called him a coward. She called him a coward, said that he co he cared more about politics than the people, which I think is pretty obvious yeah. of uh, and also true of her and most politicians. And a fraud. And a fraud. Called him a fraud. Uh, I love that. I say give her her job back. After, after hearing that, I'm like, yeah, absolutely. And she's getting absolutely dragged by the media for these texts. For what she's written about Scott Morrison, I, I I'll tell you if you see what I've written down about Scott Morrison, I'd be in a holding cell. So <laughs> Scott Morrison calling him, a, uh, Gladys calling him a coward. Good on it, right? Could be worse. Um, and I think that it's funny that that it's it seems to be uh, the national pastime now to just bully Scott Morrison and remind him of, of his failures. You know, because I feel like he can't really fuck up now. We're on the way up. Oh, geez, that's going to be my last words. I think I would have said that after the first lockdown. He can't really fuck it up now. He's coming to the end of the term. The election's coming. He's probably going to lose. So everyone's just like reminding him of his failures. And that's kind of his job is just to sit there like a smug loser while journalists go, hey, remember when you took that holiday? We, st we still remember. How was it? Were you stressed? And he has to sit there and cop that. Somebody asked him, uh, about these these texts that Gladys said, and he goes, "Well, they're they and she now mind you, she said that he was out of touch and cared more about politics than people, right? And at the same press conference, a journalist asked Scott Morrison what the price of bread was, what the price of milk was, and he genuinely didn't know, <laughs> right? So one of his colleagues has called him out of touch and that he doesn't know anything about human beings. And then another journalist has pointed out that he doesn't know the price of common items you could find at Woolworths, right? And then a journalist asked him to respond to Gladys, calling him out of touch uh, and someone who doesn't understand people. And he responded with literally this. He said that those texts are scuttlebutt. I mean, any cunt who says scuttlebutt isn't fucking human. Can somebody open up this guy's head and check if there's a microchip in there? Who the fuck says scuttlebutt? Oh, this I'm gonna I'm gonna prove to everyone that I'm your average day cobber and I'm gonna say scuttlebutt. Cunt, I haven't fucking read that since uh like a that's like a cat in a hat word. That's a Dr. Seuss sentence. Oh those those texts are scuttlebutt. Gladys is a dirty slut. You know, something like that. That's something that Dr. Zeus would write. And I'm and I'm upset about it. You know, Carl Stefanovic's upset about it too. He walked off, uh, he's our Today Show host. What fucking show does he do? Kyle Sanderlands. Kyle Sanderlands. Oh, I thought it was Carl Stefanovic. Dude, these, these, these cunts are just fading from, from anyone's sphere of, of, uh, of notice, huh? Like, I can't even, I, can't, I can no longer, I watch TV and listen to radio so little that, that I will get Carl Stefanovic and Kyle Sanderlands confused, right? So Kyle Sanderlands walked off his radio show about these texts? Yeah, he said that they shouldn't be reporting on it because there's no proof and it's not necessarily true. 
right, it's not necessarily true. They shouldn't be reporting on it. And then he walked out of his studio. Right. He said, fuck this, you can finish the show. Fuck this. Man, I love, I, man, every, I love Kyle. He's just like raking it in, making millions and saying, fuck this on breakfast radio and walking out of his own show. Fuck this. I get paid anyway. It's in my contract. That's so, that's awesome. I would love to do that. What? 29 minutes into this episode. Fuck this. And then it's just Keelan sitting here typing on the laptop for another 30 minutes, but I still get $6 million and he gets like you know, 30,000 part time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's, I don't get paid to do this. you don't get paid to do this? this. That's right. This is a leisure activity. <laughs> Guys, support me on Patreon and Keelan will get some money. And you'll get extra bonus episodes of the podcast, right? Uh, man, Australian media is fucking crazy right now. It's just fucked. It really is. It's going under and it's full of like really old people who are slowly losing their minds. That deal or no deal cunt is in the back of a police car. You know that guy, the deal or no deal guy has gone to fucking prison for choking a woman in his apartment. And it, it's, just, it's like his third offense or something, allegedly. Actually, I think it's very proven. <laughs> I feel like the Australian media for so long was like so fake and because social media didn't exist, they could pretend, right? I mean, what the fuck are you getting into such a big fight with a woman that it ends up you're in the back of a police car? He goes, oh... We, we were having a business meeting. What the fuck was the business? Sounds like a drug deal. Right? I start looking at this dude. He was the face and one of the founders of the White Ribbon Campaign. the the One of the biggest anti-domestic violence charities in the country. And this guy is like a, a repeat offender now. The first time or the second time he did something like this, he got into an argument because his, uh, his partner found uh, a crack pipe in his pocket. Now, if that isn't Australian media, I don't know what is, right? That's fucking... I mean, maybe, you know, I don't know what they got into a fight about. Maybe she picked the wrong box. Briefcase. <laughs> you know what I say to that behavior? No deal. That's not on. <laughs> I'm not about it. But you do get some great footage of Andrew O'Keefe in the back of a police car going, I'm a victim of crime! I'm a victim of crime! That's so good. I love that. There's nothing I love more than some guy that has been on television for 20 years blowing it in a night and they're just going, fuck it, I'm going to scream at the press too. You know, it's one thing to commit a heinous fucked crime and fuck that guy for doing that, but it is kind of sweet to just go, to be sitting in the police car and go, well, I fucked my legacy. I might as well go all the way. I might as well make it to Spearhead Sundays. I'm a victim of crime. Can you get those fucking journalists away from me? Really good stuff. So Andrew Keefe is done. Kyle Stefanovic loves Gladys. And ScoMo doesn't know the price of bread. Whatever. Look, they're all the same. Give or take 200 kilos, it's the same cunt. <laughs> I've had it with tradies, man. I've had it. My electrician's great. He came in on Australia Day. Right? Because I made him. He said, oh, can, we, uh, can we free this day? And I said, no, I want you to come in on Australia Day because I want to make sure you're not celebrating it because I'm doing my part to change the date. Right? He's been great. My plumber pissed me the fuck off last week. I got so upset, my plumber, right? Building this new studio, which you'll see next week. And let me know how this sounds and how this looks, by the way, because we'll still be tinkering away in the background, making it look better, making it sound better. My plumber pissed me the fuck off. We've got a plumber in here because there's, there's a little mini kitchen for all of the people who come here just to hang out unpaid and make all my videos for fun, right? Uh, they need at least running water. You know, Keelan's here, there's not even running water, okay? He's, he's literally sitting on a temporary plastic table uh, on an outside deck chair <laughs> for fun, <laughs> right? So I get the plumber in because we're moving the kitchen to turn the water off. Now, I don't know anything about plumbing. I'm a carpenter's son, okay? So all I really understand is a corroborees and woodwork, right? So I assume that this is going to be a big job. You got to turn all the taps off, whatever. So I take the dog for a walk and uh, I go to the cafe and I get myself coffee. And then I get a text from Jazz on my way back, right? So I went there 
And then I waited like 10 minutes to get my coffee. And then I started walking all the way back. And then I get a text from Jazz going, oh, the plumber has asked for a coffee while you're at the cafe. And I read that. I go, oh, for fuck's sake. But I'm a good bloke. I understand that you get the best out of people if you're really nice to them. And these people have much harder jobs than I do. I just trash Kyle, San- Kyle fucking Stefanovic. And then Keela reminds me that I'm talking about a different guy. That's my job. Okay. Hey, a few more nights on the on the with the vibrator, and I'll be sweet. I'll remember the, both those names and who they are, right? So I'm like, cool. I'll go all the way back. It's gonna make me a little bit late for my job, but it'll make this guy's day, and he'll do a better job, and it makes the world spin. Everyone should be nice to each other, right? So I go all the way back, and then I get a fucking coffee, and then I have two cups of coffee, and I'm walking the dog, and she's a puppy, so sometimes she pulls because she's like, oh, man, what's that? I have to put it in my mouth, (laughs) right? And so I have the most stressful walk back home because I'm trying to hold two really hot cups of coffee. I'm fuming, right, in my hand, but I'm like, it's going to be worth it because I'm going to make this guy's day. And then I get home. I've, and, I, and by the way, I've got his one in my left hand. I've got my one in my right hand, which is holding the lead. So, of course, I spill half my fucking coffee because of the dog, right? All over my hands and my shirt. I've got to change my shirt when I get home. I'm, 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 an, I'm annoyed, right? But this dude's coffee is ready and waiting for him. Going to be great, right? I get home and then the plumber is outside of my house in his car. And he goes, oh, thank you so much, mate. I give it to him. And then he drives away. The cunt was finished. The guy was fucking sitting in his car getting me to deliver shit to him. Don't ask me for coffee if you're not halfway through the fucking job. Dude, that ruined my week. I got so upset. I went through trials and tribulations for that. He was fucking done. He just used me as a, I'm not Uber Eats, dude. I thought he was going to be there for hours. Am I unreasonably annoyed? That sucks. <coughs> so that annoyed me. I don't have anything, but there's nothing more to that story. It, just, it was just very annoying that he got, he got me to do that. Is that not rude? He was leaving my house. He knew he was leaving when he asked for the coffee. He was packing his tools up. I think that's rude. I paid for it. He didn't pay me back. Not that it matters. <laughs> but also it kind of fucking matters. I didn't even get five stars. Like if I, if I was, if I signed up to Uber, at least I would get a fucking rating at the end of that. Spilled my coffee for nothing. I should have spat in his. Anyway, guys. The important thing is I didn't celebrate Australia Day. Um... I got, I got one. Look, I know that I'm going to say these. I'm going to say these next three letters, and about seventy percent of the cunts listening to this are going to turn their brains off. But bear with me. This is fucking hilarious. Okay. I'm going to say the three letters, and I know it's going to hurt your brains, and you're going, you're going to want to go. Oh, sick of it. But just listen, okay? NFTs. Stay listening. Stay with me, okay? There's actually some interesting NFT news, and it's not some cunt spending a quarter million on a picture of a fucking ape, all right? That shit sucks too. I'm over that. I'm sick of seeing those fucking... Is anyone else sick of seeing these fucking pictures of monkeys selling for a quarter million dollars? Oh, this celebrity just bought a fucking bored ape. Cool. Take him out back. Shoot him in the head. I don't care. Give that money to someone who needs it. Buy a house. Buy a fucking Rolex. Buy 10 Rolexes for that, but don't buy a Pixel for 250 grand. I'm very into into NFTs. I I really believe in the technology, but it also pisses me off. Here's the thing. NFTs are a scam and they're bullshit, and that's exactly why you should be involved because that's how everyone makes money. That's, that's, That's what money is, you know? Oh, NFTs aren't real. Yes, neither is a fucking piece of paper with the queen's head on it. Dude, that does not anything. It's worth what it's worth because we think that's what it's worth. That's what everything is, right? Why are my tickets worth 40 bucks? Because I said so and you agreed. <laughs> it's, the, it's the fucking, that's the world. Um, but anyway, right? This is an actual interesting thing about NFTs. This is very funny. So there's this kid 
from Indonesia. Have you heard about this, Keelan? This is awesome. So there's there's this kid from Indonesia uh, called Gozali, G H O Z A L I, Indonesian boys NFT collection, right? And what he does is he takes uh, a picture of himself every single day, and this is for a school project. And he mints it, turns it into an NFT, and just puts it on OpenSea, which is like eBay for NFTs, right? Uh, and he started this from 18 to 22. He started in 2017, 2021, right? And he didn't tell anyone about this. He's not the famous guy. He was just doing it for school, and then he just kept doing it for no reason, right? And he's just an Indonesian kid living in a fucking village. He probably uses 100% of the village's bandwidth uploading the image, Right? And this kid, right, crypto Twitter found this collection that's been going since 2017 of just like some Indonesian kid, like taking webcam photos. He looks more malnourished than I do, <laughs> right? And he has made, right, because crypto Twitter thought it would be funny to buy all of these, he's made a million dollars out of this shit. A million dollars. And right now, if you have a look at them, the, the price of them has dropped uh, a little bit uh, since it went super viral. But these things are selling still 15 hours ago, $600. Like every every couple hours, one of these things sells for $600 and there's like a thousand of them. Uh, and he's currently, it's currently gross like 391 Ethereum, which is what? 391 Ethereum is... Uh, 1.5 million Australian dollars, which is like two uh, US dollars. Um, and this guy has gone from just being a dude in his web, in his bedroom, taking photos of himself in a webcam to like literally one of the richest people in his country. Right. And absolutely in his village, like to the point where if you follow this guy on Twitter, it's actually mind-blowing how much the guy's life has changed he just posted a photo of himself he's being celebrated in indonesia as like a hero for pulling this off like oh my god this guy made more than two dollars that's crazy he posted a photo on his twitter of him paying tax and they made it they did a whole ceremony about it he was invited in person to pay tax sounds like a threat but okay right that's so good I wonder what's going to happen to this kid. He's gone from being like some poor villager in Indonesia. I mean, I'm assuming where he was beforehand, but I don't think he was doing particularly well. I mean, he had fucking internet and something to take a photo with, so he's going to be doing okay, but I don't think that he'd be crushing it, right? But I, he's gone from just, yeah, being some Indonesian villager to being a fucking crypto millionaire in about a week, I guarantee you the next like Ghazali everyday photo is going to be a hostage situation. Like it's just going to be someone else holding a gun to his head going, buy this or, or I pull the trigger. You know, didn't that happen to the Flappy Bird guy, that app developer? <laughs> I feel like this is going to be a Flappy Bird situation where some cunt is just going to, it just, just from like some third world, second world country is going to make an obscene amount of money and then something will happen and they'll go, guys, I've decided to end the project because not everybody likes it when you go from, you know, a village with, with dirty running water to being a millionaire and posting about it on Twitter and shaking hands with the, with the fucking president for paying tax. I wonder what's going to happen to him. That's that's fucking crazy. I mean, that's a bet. That's a better story than someone spending a quarter million dollars on a picture of an ape, isn't it? I think that's super cool. You know, that's that's worth burning down a few forests, isn't it? Um, what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to wrap up this episode with miscellaneous bit at the end. It's the worst part of the podcast. It's where I uh, answer questions sent in by the listeners. Uh, send your questions to podcast at loosespears.com. That's podcast at loosespears.com. And this uh, section is brought to you by Patreon, uh, which uh, you can jump on. And there's a bunch of uh, Sunday supplement extended episodes of the podcast. Uh, they come out every, every week as well if you want more Spearhead Sundays. And they're going to be starting up with this episode as well. So check that out. Um, now, this was sent in, emailed in. Uh, a news story that a listener thought that I would like, and I'm I'm seeing this and me liking, okay? This is the headline. It's the Daily Mail, so the headline is uh, about as big as a Harry Potter book, the last one. 
Impotent man, 45, may never be able to use his penis again after his partner accidentally deployed expanding foam inside his urethra in bizarre attempt to keep him erect during sex. (laughs) And that's the headline. Expanding foam. Have you ever seen expanding foam? Dude, that shit, if you it's 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 exactly what it sounds like. It's foam that expands. I wouldn't be surprised. I haven't read this, I've just read the headline. I wouldn't be surprised if we get to the end of this thing and it explodes. This is fucking crazy. I mean, Viagra exists. In my head, like popping Viagra is like pretty out there. You know? It's not crazy, but it's like, oh yeah, that's pretty you know, good on you. That's like a and a, a creative solution to your issue. <laughs> Whipping out the fucking expanding foam is next level. Warning, graphic content, awesome. An American man, oh, of course, it, of course, this makes sense, ended up with foam stuck in his penis after ill-advised sex act. <laughs> Surgeons had to cut a new hole for him to urinate from due to the extent of damage. Experts say... Impotent men are using sounding as a home remedy to stay firm. Jeez, we're going to learn a few things in this article, huh? Okay, an American man may never be able to use his penis again after his partner accidentally sprayed expanding foam up his urethra in a sex act gone wrong. The 45-year-old patient had to have a new... I've read this. uh, Medics who treated him revealed he will only qualify for reconstructive surgery if he passes a psychiatric evaluation. Yeah, if he steps foot inside a fucking psychiatrist's office... And he goes, all right, so why are you here? And he goes, oh, my wife said to keep my penis up, we should try putting expanding foam in there. And I thought it would be a good idea. Uh, That guy would end up in a padded cell. I don't think he's going to, I don't think he's going to get a new one. The unidentified man was struggling with impotence and had been inserting various objects into the opening of his penis during sex to stay erect. Oh, I mean, wouldn't that hurt? Putting shit in there to keep it up and then putting it in someone else? That's disgust. Keelan's going to vomit. Oh Keelan's going to leave the fucking room. He's going to hang on a minute. This isn't very much fun anymore. <laughs> I want to be paid for this segment. <laughs> Things went horribly wrong during one of these sessions when the man's partner tried to use the straw of a can of insulation spray to keep him firm. No! I've seen those things. That's the little fucking plastic straw on the end of a spray can. Don't do that! At some point, the man's unidentified partner accidentally... (laughs) Okay, this is funny again. They did it accidentally. Hang on, those things are detachable. Why would you keep the can? Why would you keep it in the can? Accidentally hit the button on top of the can, deploying the foam inside of his penis. Oh my God, no! The foam, normally used for home insulation, hardened and he was left with several masses on the inside of his member and bladder. Oh, fuck. Oh, my God. They've got a CT scan. Oh, no. They've got pictures of it. Dude. Okay. So, first, I'm going to show you the, I'm going to show you the CT scan and we can put this up. We might have to put the other picture up on Patreon, but we can put this bit up on YouTube. Check out the insulation foam. That's the x-ray, the CT scan. The white bits and the black bits is one in his bladder. They're big, right? Now, now Keelan, I'm going to show you the bit, and this is definitely not going on the YouTube. This is, this is what they got out of him. <laughs> Keelan is closing his eyes. That's, oh my God, that looks like a fucking soccer ball. That's so big. Dude, pictured here is the total amount of insulation foam removed from the man's bladder and penis. Man, this guy could... I'm surprised he's alive. The pieces of foam became trapped inside the man's penis. These pieces proved too hard to remove by pulling them out of the penis. (laughs) So instead, doctors opted to remove them by cutting a hole in the man's perineum, the area between the scrotum scrotum and the anus. That's creative. Some of these pieces were up to 18... Millimeters in length. Oh my god. That's fucking hardcore. Dude. Urologists who detail the incident in the urology case reports. Yeah, that makes the news, doesn't it? 
said the man waited three weeks to seek medical attention. What the fuck? What? The guy walked around with that in his bladder for three weeks. <clears throat> Holy shit. I guess he would uh, be quite embarrassed. Man, people really don't want to be embarrassed, huh? I don't get that. I'm, I don't get embarrassed easily. But some people out there really don't like getting embarrassed. This guy had a soccer ball in his dick and he's like, yeah, but I don't want to have an awkward conversation. That's fucking nuts. He only went for treatment after finding it increasingly sore and difficult to urinate. By the time he arrived at hospital, he was passing blood. I mean, yeah, how did he piss? Oh, bye, Rosie. Rosie's leaving. She's probably heard what we're talking about. Good call. See ya. <clears throat> Once he raised the alarm with medics, scans felt ra- various masses of the hardened foam with some measuring up to nearly 11 centimeters long. Holy shit. All right, now it's the Daily Mail, so they're repeating themselves six different ways. Extracted. They use tools. Blah, blah. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. They're just repeating themselves, and they have more pictures. Holy shit. I'm looking at endoscope pictures. This is insane. Man, what a fucking legend. Okay. Now, listening to that, you might think, poor guy. How could it get any worse for this guy? There's no way. There's no way up from here. All right. But there is a bright side. I'm just going to read this. There is a real bright side to this story. Okay. The patient who is currently homeless. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's why, well, if he was homeless, where the fuck did he get the insulation foam from? That's for houses. Maybe he was building one. He used the last of his foam up his dick. That sucks. Uh, the, man, this is how fucked America is. The patient who is currently homeless will only qualify for an assessment if he achieves a stable living environment. What the fuck? Yeah, that sucks. Hey, sorry. Yeah, we know that if you don't get medical treatment, you're probably going to fucking die and you'll never piss again. But maybe you should get a job and pay rent and then we'll, we'll think about treating you. That's crazy. That's so fucked. Poor guy. Yeah, that's so awesome. What a legend. And now there's another one. Boy, 15, gets knotted USB cable stuck in his penis during experiment to work out how big his member was. <laughs> oh, man. That's that's great. Aren't, aren't do, honestly, dudes rock. You don't see women out there doing, taking risks like that just for a bit, just for like a good night out. Um, that's great. All right, guys. I'm going to end it there. Thank you very much. I hope I didn't ruin you, your weekend, but that's Spearhead Sundays. If you, if you have a, a question you'd like me to answer, or if you have a story you'd like me to tell me, tell me you, you would like to tell me, send it through the podcast at loosebeers.com. The podcast is coming out every single Sunday from now. Uh, earlier, if you're on Patreon, I'm recording this on a Wednesday, so the Patreon version will be up on Wednesday, as well as the extended version too. Um, so check that out, and thank you very much for supporting what I do. I, I really appreciate the patience. I've been very, very sick with the sleep apnea stuff, and it's made it very hard for my for me to do anything. Uh, but I am on the mend, uh, and I'm looking forward to these Melbourne Comedy Festival shows in March and April, and I can't wait to get my face fixed. Stay tuned next week for the studio reveal. It's really great. Listen to this. New floor, all right? Thank you, fuck you, and I will talk to you very soon. Have a shit one. <laughs>